This is the Best Health Podcast, brought to you by Wake Forest Baptist Health in partnership with MedCost. Good day, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Best Health Podcast, brought to you by Wake Forest Baptist Health. Justin Gomez here once again. And uh, we have a really interesting, fun series of podcasts coming up, um, talking about um, the new birth center at Wake Forest Baptist Health. We're so excited about this new, um, this new tool and this new place um, that is available to the community. And we'll be talking with a few different doctors and providers about different aspects of. Um, moms and babies and the birth centers and all the topics surrounding um, that that life-changing experience of having a baby. And the first guest that we have, we're super excited, is Dr. Una O'Neill. Um, she is one of our OB doctors here at Wake Forest Baptist Health. So welcome, Dr. O'Neill. How's it going? Thank you. Doing great, Justin. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited that you're here. Um, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Um, so there's so much we can talk about surrounding the topic of becoming pregnant, having a baby, delivering the baby. After you deliver the baby, we could spend hours and hours and hours talking about that. Um, but we're going to try and uh, narrow our topic down today to just a few minutes. And um, we'll be talking um, a little bit about just kind of um, the well-being of the mother um, during pregnancy and, and, of course, during childbirth. And then... Um, postpartum after after uh, the mom delivers the baby um, what kind of, of well checks uh, should we be looking for so um, to start out dr. O'Neill just tell us a little bit about yourself and and um, when did you wake up and decide you wanted to go into uh, medicine um, thank you Justin so I have been here at Wake Forest Baptist for 11 years and pre- previous to that I was in private practice I didn't always know I wanted to be an OBGYN. It is certainly a calling. You know, delivery mm-hmm. and experiencing childbirth is, is just the coolest thing a woman can go through in her mm-hmm. lifetime, so unique. And anybody who wants to be a part of that, particularly medically, it is just a calling. And so I originally thought I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. And then there when I was go. when I was in medical school, I did my rotation on orthopedic surgery, and I hated it. <laughs> <That> <laughs> I, won't, was, I won't tell my ortho surgeon <laughs> that. was that. not my calling. Um, and then I did my OBGYN rotation immediately following, and I just fell in love with it. And um, that truly, anybody who is involved in women's health at this level, it, it is a calling, and you just, it, it feels natural to, to do it, and that's what it feels like to me. That's really cool. So take it uh, just one step further back. What, what uh, how did you get interested in medicine in the first place? Um, I have to admit, my parents leaned me that way. They were very crafty. And when I was five years old, my parents said to me, Uno, you have such good hands. You should be a surgeon. Uh And I ate it up. And I followed that trail. And it worked out because I did end up loving biology and and human anatomy. And it's funny, I look back now, and I thought, at five years old, you can't even write your name yet. (laughs) And they told me I had good hands. They were just very, very smart. And I've used that same line on my children. We'll see if it works. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. See if we can get a multi-generational doctor situation (laughs) going. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so I did mention earlier, um, in, in case uh, our listeners haven't heard, um, the brand new birth center just opened here yes. recently at Wake Forest Baptist Health. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you um, have actually uh, delivered yes. a few babies oh, there yes. at the birth center. Um, so just talk to us, I guess, a little bit about the birth center and, and like, from your perspective, how it is to um, have moms be able to deliver in, in the new facility. Yeah. The birth center is so exciting because, number one, it has just, it's kept up with the times. You know, times are changing, medicine advances, and it's up to us as hospital systems and physicians to keep up with those advances to really give excellent care to our patients. And that's what excites me so much about this birth center. Certainly, if I was having a child, this is where I would want to be. Um, you know, the first thing I think about is you know, if something unexpected were to happen, if you have an unintended outcome, something were to go on, you're at the place that has all the resources between the physicians, nurses, doctors, NICUs, ICUs, um, surgical, uh, 
centers, Mm -hmm. we can take care of you to the fullest. And I think as a mother, you're now making maternal decisions that are not just about you, but about your family. And certainly if I'm making a decision about my family and taking care of um, my family, this is where I would want to be. That is very helpful. Um, so you are part of what you do um, as an OBGYN physician is um, you're with the mother throughout the entire process. Mm-hmm. Um, so talk to us a little bit about, and I'm sure different um, patients and different moms react differently to the news that they're pregnant and how they handle pregnancy. And um, I'm going to try not to, I'm, I'm a guy here talking about being pregnant, so I'm going to try and not to get myself in trouble too much. <laughs> um, so if you could um, just talk to us a little bit about um, uh, the relationship between an OB doctor and, and their patient that is a mom, expectant mom, and um, just how ladies handle it differently and how you just help help the patient through the process during pregnancy and, and what's that like when, when they're coming in the clinic for their, for their checkups? Yeah, so I, I would say there's no more special relationship that a doctor can have with her patient than um, during pregnancy. And it's a very special relationship. And, you know, it does take two to tango, so we do include spouses. Um, we do not completely ignore them just because they're not carrying. Yes. Um, they are a part of all of this. But I, I think... In all the years I've been doing this, you see women at their best and you see women at their worst at this time for, for many different reasons. And, and helping women get through that, um, I, I've, I'm, nev- I'm always surprised by the power a woman has and what she can go through. Mm-hmm. Um, and also all the, the effects pregnancy can have on somebody, both physically and emotionally, is also very powerful, and um, and you need somebody who you feel comfortable with to disclose how you're feeling and, and what's bothering you and what your expectations are. And that is the uniqueness of, of those 10 months of pregnancy where we, where we take care of you. And then postpartum as well is a whole new experience for a couple. Uh, and that is a big part of the care that we provide is talking about postpartum care as well. Sure. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, when um, moms and, and dads who are accompanying their significant others on appointments come in and they're talking with you, I'm sure it's a, a great resource for them to have you to bounce um, information off and communicate with you of, is this normal? Should I be expecting this? Absolutely. Um, this happened to me. Does that normally happen during pregnancy? Right. And so I, I will, just from my own personal experience, we have two boys, my wife and I, just that reassurance of the physician there along the way is, is a huge, huge. Absolutely. And particularly if it's your first pregnancy, I mean, you have yes. no idea. Yes. And we know that. And our approach is always about expectation. So at my appointments, particularly, I always like to talk about, well, what should you expect between now and your next appointment? What's normal? What's going to happen? So you're not sitting around at home wondering if something is normal and, and anxious about something. And that goes for moms and spouses as to what to expect. Um, Sounds good. So when um, moms are coming in, what are one, maybe one or two of the most common um, questions or conditions you get during pregnancy? I don't know if it's um, a lot of women are worried about hypertension or, um, of course, at at various points, I'm sure it it is uncomfortable. Um, So just reassuring them um, that they're on track and they're doing great. But maybe some of the during pregnancy, what are what are some of the a couple of the most common questions you get as women are going through the different trimesters? Sure. Well, in the first trimester, um, it's all the discomforts of early pregnancy that include nausea, vomiting, constipation, fatigue. I mean, just that I go to bed at 7 p.m., I wake up at 7 a.m., and I'm still tired, um, gut-wrenching fatigue. That is common in the first trimester. Um, second trimester is what I call the honeymoon of pregnancy. That's when most women actually start to feel really good, get their energy back, get back to exercising and, and feeling more like themselves. And then third trimester comes back around where those discomforts of pregnancy that really get you, you know, it's just, it's not cute anymore to be pregnant. That's when you're really <laughs> feeling um, 
those discomforts and you just got to survive until it's time to deliver. Uh, that's how I break down what women will experience throughout their pregnancy. In terms of medical conditions, the two top ones that we're constantly um, screening for and looking out for is hypertension. Mm -hmm. That's when your blood pressure goes up, particularly in the last trimester of pregnancy, mm -hmm. as well as diabetes. Okay. And so um, it's one thing that, that I counsel my patients on is every pregnant woman is actually a little bit diabetic. You have metabolic and hormonal changes that affect the way you metabolize um, food. And so we test every pregnant woman for diabetes at cer certain points in pregnancy, depending mm -hmm. on their personal medical history. Mm -hmm. And so diet and exercise, as it relates to that, is also a very, very big part of prenatal care. Great point. Yeah, so thanks for bringing that up. Um, so... I probably what a lot of people just generally gravitate towards as far as care goes as physical care mm -hmm. during pregnancy and of course during childbirth. Um, but there's uh, mental um, care that is needed sometimes and emotional care. Mm -hmm. um, so talk to us a little bit about um, the the hormonal, emotional changes and, and what um, women who are pregnant might be able, might be able to expect um, so they don't think that something's out of the ordinary yeah, sure. necessarily. So there is definitely a link between hormonal, emotional, and mental health, and a lot of that manifests in pregnancy with the hormonal changes. <clears throat> I don't particularly like this, the reference that I'm hormonal. Um, I think it's much deeper than that, mm -hmm. and I, I don't like to treat those issues flippantly. Um, but there are a lot of... Um, mood changes that can occur in pregnancy, particularly if there's anything pre-existing. And this can range from just mild anxiety mm -hmm. um, to full-blown diagnoses of bipolar, depression, mm -hmm. schizophrenia, any kind of psychiatric illness at any level um, can get worse in pregnancy. And so maximizing how you feel before you get pregnant would be ideal, but certainly you cannot ignore it and wish it away during pregnancy. That's the time when you have to focus on it and really be on top of it even more. Um, and that is not just about you. There are fetal effects that can occur as well if you do not manage your mental health. Interesting. So we are very forthright. We are very non-judgmental. We talk to everybody about it. Um, the other surprise that women may not quite understand going into this is you don't have to have a pre-existing mental issue mm -hmm. that you're even aware of mm -hmm. for it to not manifest in pregnancy. So there can be a lot of new emotional or mental um, symptoms that you feel that you're really not used to. And again, I don't like it to just be blown off as being hormonal. It's something that you need to discuss with your provider um, and, and get on top of that. Because then when you deliver the baby, these can change again postpartum. Mm -hmm. And so truly taking care of yourself includes incorporating that aspect of life. Gotcha. So if you, as you are talking with your patients, what are some tips that you're giving them throughout pregnancy to, that they can be able to maximize their wellness and, and health during, during the pregnancy just to help them be as, as strong in a, as possible during the process? Yeah, so um, broadly speaking to all my patients, number one, I am a huge believer in um, exercise and pregnancy. Okay. I think women who exercise, um, and it's consistency that matters, and that exercise includes some form of yoga or stretching. It doesn't have to be a full class, but something daily, just in your bathroom, five minutes a day, will make a huge difference to what occurs to your joints and tendons in pregnancy. Um, and I think women who exercise, when it comes down to pushing and delivering, they do so much better than people who have not done any kind of exercise and stretching in pregnancy. So hands down, that's my first. Um, if, if you are used to exercising and you have a certain routine that you do, you can absolutely continue that throughout pregnancy. Um, I certainly wouldn't take up something new or hardcore like marathon running <laughs> when you first become pregnant. Um, but if you have not exercised in the past and you turn a new leaf when you become pregnant, you can start a, an exercise program, and that's only going to have benefits in many ways. Sure. Well, um, so let's uh, just move. We have a few minutes left. Let's just move on to it's go time, right? Mm -hmm. um, the mom is in labor. They're coming to our new birth center. Yes. Um, what, what, when they arrive and, and when you first walk in the room and see them, 
walk us through maybe what that looks like and and how you're you're taking care of the mom during that process as well and and providing her the support that she needs. Sure. Well, I, I mean, first of all, and first and foremost, the facility is so gorgeous. It's such a pleasure as from a physician point of view to work there and get to use the top-notch resources and equipment. Um, but when we walk in, we have gorgeous views, and it's just a nice, serene place to, to experience childbirth and labor. Um, when we walk in, we have um, kind of a separate entrance uh, it's called porch entrance. So the staff, the nurses, the physicians um, aren't necessarily invading the family's privacy all the time, being okay. in and out like a regular hospital room. There's a place for the family to be. Okay. And it's just a little bit more inclusive and um, and sensitive to you know a family's needs because you're all in this one room together at a very intense time. Um, we have nurse midwives who we work with as well. So depending on your comfort level and, mm -hmm. and what exactly as a patient you're looking for your experience, uh, we can provide all different types of providers mm -hmm. um, for the type of birth that you'd like to have. If that includes a birthing tub uh, versus a traditional birthing bed, it's it's all an option for you. Sure. Um, you know, I think the other thing that has that is really nice in our setup is we've developed a system of taking care of our patients from the ground up, and that includes communication between the team. Mm -hmm. Labor and delivery is is different from any other kind of medical care, where the nurse has so much more involvement in your care, mm -hmm. um, both in decision making and in action, as well as your nurse midwife and your doctor and the potential surgeon. Um, the OBGYN if you if you end up with a c-section and the communication um, that we have oh I must do a shout out and include my anesthesia colleagues too because that's such yes. an important part. Indeed. <laughs> so important. I didn't mean to leave them out uh, but you know we have set times that as a team we all get together and we meet and we discuss every patient to know exactly where they are so everybody is on board with your care okay and so um i, I think women need to feel comfortable that the nurse is talking to the doctor who's also talking to the midwife who's also talking to the anesthesiologist so anybody who's involved in her care is on the same page and we meet multiple times throughout the day as things progress and change in labor so that we're all on top of that that makes a huge difference in the patient experience absolutely yeah that's great information dr o'neill um so you know each pregnancy is different um and a woman giving birth is is miraculous and it's just amazing just the the what is able to occur in to bring a, a new baby life into this world um but it's it's different for each patient so um you and and the team are in there um because some labor lasts a couple hours some labor lasts multiple hours right so mm -hmm. um how do you how do you go throughout communicating and talking and comforting and encouraging the patient during that process and kind of gauging you know, how long their labor might be, yeah. uh, given that it's so different for everyone. Yeah, I wish we had a crystal ball. We still have not <laughs> developed that crystal ball for women. Um, and, you know, each each experience is unique, depending on medically also what is going on with both the mom and the baby. Sure. So we always have to take that into consideration. You know, rule number one, when women go into spontaneous labor, for example, I just tell my patients, you just need to show up. You know, your body is made to do this. You don't need to overthink this. And we're going to coach you through everything that you need. So number one, just show up and have fun with it. You know, don't rob yourself of the experience. Just go with it. We're going to do everything that is in the best interest of you and your baby. So if that means you have no epidural and you have a completely natural labor and that works for you, great. Mm -hmm. uh, if that means you end up with an emergency C-section because, let's say, baby is not tolerating labor, mm -hmm. well, that's in the best interest for you and the baby, and great. It's all going to be handled um, with your interests and your baby's interests um, in, in our hearts. And so um, as much as we can try and predict, we always play games and try and predict, you know, of course, the weights of babies yes. and when they're going to come. And everybody, we're, yes. we always have a winner, and it's always fun to be that winner. Um, in most cases, mom is actually the one who's right about all of it. Sure. So um, there, there's something to be said about that. Um, but we try, you know, every... Every time we meet as a team, mm -hmm. we try and assess where we are, and then we talk about that with the mom so she knows where she is in this process, too. Sure. 
So <clears throat> the baby um, comes and it's delivered and um, everyone um, is excited. So then just talk to us very briefly. I know, you know, lots of different scenarios or situations can happen, but generally, typically speaking, um, when the baby arrives and is delivered, um, what what's the next steps for, for mom and baby right after that? <laughs> well, we do... Um We do try and first just do skin to skin. If people aren't familiar with that concept, as soon as the baby is delivered, whether vaginal delivery or cesarean section, um, the baby is dried off and we put that baby on mom's chest, um, skin to skin, and that helps with not just bonding, but temperature regulation, breastfeeding, things like that. And so we do that routinely. That is just normal for us. After a baby is born, we spend about an hour in the immediate postpartum recovery suite. We initiate breastfeeding as soon as possible. Okay. Um, dad can participate in skin to skin too, or who, whatever support person is there sure. with mom. Um, and then thereafter, patients are transferred to the postpartum unit where they have lactation consultants helping them with however the feeding method is, is working for them, mm-hmm. uh, as well as um, any other needs for mom and baby. I'm glad you brought up lactation consultant because um, uh, speaking from experience uh, with our two boys and um, just with some of our friends and our circle of friends that um, can be um, a, a pretty high stress point for sure. families and moms and, and babies because the mom wants to make sure that they, they want to feel like they're providing the proper nutrition and the right amount, and um, it can be a pretty big stress point. So talk to us a little bit about what support we offer at Wake Forest Baptist with the lactation consultants and how that helps mom out. Yeah, I wish moms could know breastfeeding is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world, and um, it is a disservice to us to, to paint breastfeeding as if it's just easy. It's not. It's work. And so, yes. you know, I, I wish my patients w- can understand that and not feel so stressed over the fact that it is hard and you just have to keep at it and you do the best that you can. And so we have individualized lactation consultants who will work with you one-on-one to help you with that. Sure. Hands down, I think the best thing a woman can do to promote breastfeeding is drink a ton of water immediately after delivery and sleep as much as possible. Mm-hmm. We always counsel sleep when baby sleeps and it's very difficult for women to do that. But if you can do that, that actually helps you produce um, which is the biggest issue initially in the first couple days of breastfeeding is just that production and getting that going. Sure. Um, our lactation consultants are phenomenal. I think that one-on-one help is very, very helpful. But just like labor, the breastfeeding process is very unique to each woman, and it's going to be different for each woman. So, again, you have to show up and then have your experience, mm-hmm. and don't compare yourself to others mm-hmm. uh, because it is, it is truly different for every person. That's great feedback, Dr. O'Neill. Um, we just have a minute left, and I want to touch on, so um, uh, generally speaking, uh, everything is, let's, let's assume everything's going well. We'll follow the process. Mom and baby are discharged. Mm-hmm. Um, so then what's your next um, touch point yeah. for the mother as, as their OB provider? Well, a, a little bit of it depends on uh, medically, surgically, uh, what is going on with the mom. So if there are other medical conditions that generally uh, requires an earlier follow-up appointment Mm -hmm. than our typical just six-week postpartum appointment, uh, we treat every woman individually with what they might need. Mm -hmm. Um, I counsel every patient, first two weeks after delivery, hardest two weeks of your life, hands down, for mom and spouse. Amen. And it also brings you together in a way where six months later you'll look back at it and say, hey, we got through this. Um, But when you're going through it at the time, so, so difficult. And I like to warn all my patients about that. Um, And it's one of those things, like marriage, you don't know it till you go through it. And so, um, you know, that's just the life experience. Um, But with each patient, depending, again, on how they're feeling, um, you could be seen within a few days Mm -hmm. in our offices. You could be seen within a few weeks. It just depends on you. Sure. Um, Well, Dr. O'Neill, I really appreciate you taking the time today. Uh, I think this has been great information. Um, Obviously, you're excited. I'm excited. We're excited about the New Birth Center. Um, If people listening want to find out more about the New Birth Center at Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center, uh, they can go to wakehealth.edu slash birth center. 
there's all kinds of great information on there. Um, there's a virtual tour. People can see the facility. Um, they can call and uh, schedule an in-person tour, which I think would be highly encouraged. Um, there's different types of classes that they can sign up Absolutely. for on the website as well. So Yeah, I would uh, urge women, take advantage. You've got this great resource in our town now for excellent, excellent care. Just just take advantage of what we've got. Sure, yeah. And um, you can, um, there's information on all of our providers on the website, including Dr. O'Neill and all of her friends and colleagues as well. Um, so you're able to look at that on the website. Um, if you want to call, you can call um, 336-716-WAKE, and um, we can get you more information that way as well. So I appreciate everyone listening. And um, on behalf of Wake Forest Baptist Health and Best Health, we will sign off and see you next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Best Health Podcast brought to you by Wake Forest Baptist Health. For more wellness info, check out wakehealth.edu and follow us on social media. Wake Forest Baptist Health, the gold standard of healthcare. care.